looks like when you see it in action. Hopefully everyone can see my screen here. So we see a VXLUX OS system and our backing vCenter. So if you go to the vCenter object and go to configure and storage providers, I'm going to copy the URL the storage provider that I've already done. In this case, uh, in order to create the VASA provider, I just reused the SVM template, uh, configured it to use the same management and data networks, set the host name, entered that into our lab's DNS. Uh, I used the included Oracle JDK, uh, installed the VASA RPM and the SDC RPMs, and bound those to the MDMs. So there are two pools of, of uh, storage, one of them, the FG pool is not running at the moment, so I won't use that. What we need to do is first register the VASA provider. So I will call this TME VASA demo. The URL from the VASA provider is here. And then when the username and password, we're actually providing the username and password for the MDM at this point. And as we can see, now we have the VAS provider listed and it is online. Second thing we need to do is create a data store. So from the data center, virtual data center in question where I want to put this, I'm going to go to storage, new data store. And now we'll see we have a third type of data store that we can make use of. A VBAL data store. Now I'm going to use the the SSD back medium granularity data store. Now you have to pick which hosts you're going to make this accessible to. I'm going to pick all of them. And when I finish this part of it, it's going to uh, bind the data store to those hosts and create the protocol endpoint for them. So if we come to one of our hosts and look at the storage, oops, the host itself. We'll now see that the data store is here in addition to the local volume data store and that the protocol endpoint has been attached to it and this will look familiar. Uh, the way it's presented is going to look familiar to anybody who's seen a regular VXLUX OS volumes mounted inside of, of uh, vCenter. Now at this point we could go ahead and actually start uh, creating VMs that use this uh, VVOLS data store and map them in. But again, as I said, one of the important things is that we are able to use storage policies. So let's show how this works. This could have been done under a default policy and we could use that data store. So going to the policies and profiles and then to the VM storage policies, we will create a new storage policy. Call this VXLUX Gold Medium Granularity SATA SSD. I don't put a description in there at the moment. I'm not applying any common rules, but if we look at the rule sets, we can. The important thing I want you to see here is the storage types. Um, once we pick the VXLUX VASA, you'll see the four tiers I indicated earlier. Um, mine is SSD back, so it'll be gold. But if I picked, for example, the compressed and went to look and see what's available it's clear that there are no compatible um, 
backing uh, storage pools or data stores. So I will go to gold. And now we'll see that the uh, SSD medium granularity vVols data store that we created is in fact compatible with this and, and can be used. Uh, what's going on in the background there is it's communicating with the BASA, which is communicating with the MDM, and it's actually validating uh, the underlying storage. Uh, so it has to be, you know, a medium granular, a fine granularity pool, excuse me, uh, if you're going to try and pick the compressed. Okay, so now we have that available to us for creating and defining policies for VMs if we want to ensure that they always stick to those. So let's do a quick uh, virtual machine creation. Uh, one thing I'll note real quick is if we look at volumes in the system, there are no volumes defined currently. It's empty. Um, those will, I'm going to show you how those get created as we go on. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to create a VM off that SVM template. We'll stick it on that host. Uh, and now we're going to select our storage. So our VVOL data store is available under the default policies, but I'm going to bind it to this gold policy so that uh, anywhere we want to move it uh, to be compliant, it has to stick with a compatible backing data store. And then we'll finish that up. We'll give it just a moment to clone that and begin going. And what we'll notice is that now we have the new volumes created and, uh, and are being mapped to the, the hosts here. So you've got the, the configuration vball here and you've got the data vball here and so far nothing else. One thing you can also note is in the VxLexOS GUI, you see the indicator here that shows it's aware that there are volumes, but uh, you can't expand that and actually see them. There's no uh, management or accidental deleting of the volumes from the GUI. This is all going to be done, like I said, through uh, the vCenter web client. So that has been cloned and is ready to go. If we power it on, let me return here. We'll see that now it's creating the swap memory vball and allocating that space as needed. Uh, I did a thick provision. If it was thin, it would obviously say thin. Okay, we're up and running. And what I'd like to do is just real quickly take a snapshot. and we'll snapshot the virtual machine's memory as well. Now, as of doing this in you know, traditional implementations, all this would be done inside the, uh, the local or whatever data store was assigned and VMware is handling all this. In our case, what we're doing is we're actually allowing the Xflex OS to build the snapshots itself using its native and we have those here. And we'll see now that there are two, three gigabyte um, memory things. One of these is the snapshotted version. Okay, that is all I want to go through right now. Um, 